happy to welcome you for another lecture today's topic is aging and tenderness of meat as you all know aging is also called as conditioning it is a practice for making meat more tender and flavorful and it's an important topic for postgraduate students earlier i have discussed it briefly in undergraduate lecture when i was talking about conversion of muscle to meat but i need to discuss it in more details today and the effect of aging and more about the tenderness and subsequently i will be talking two separate lectures on artificial tenderization before i talk about aging or tenderness we need to understand about palatability characteristics of meat or sometime we also call eating quality so most important qualities are like tenderness which also include texture then juiciness then flavor sometime it includes the aroma also and the color so these are the quality aspect which we say eating quality or the palatability of which the, the tenderness is the most important factor so texture of meat is also part of that tenderness and juiciness of course important and flavor is also important so tenderness only is main focus for our lecture today but we will be talking details about aging and how it helps in tenderness so in the recent years there is lot of changes and improvement in the science and technology related to meat production and meat science or meat technology so through genetical improvement there is lot of changes possible in the tenderness of meat and also through the application of meat science and meat technology the tenderness can be improved and the palatability can be improved so before we talk more details about the effect of aging and tenderness we need to understand about the fundamental aspects of tenderness this is of two category one we can say the background aspect of tenderness another is the contractile machinery the background aspect is more important which is primarily by the connective tissue so when i discussed about the structure of muscle i have mentioned about the connective tissue wrapping the muscle at different level and there are three category of connective tissue that is the epimysium perimysium and endomysium so these connective tissue plays an important role in the background tenderness and next is the muscle used the muscle which is used more will accumulate more connective tissue and becomes comparatively tougher and the age also an important factor in this more the age more there is the accumulation of connective tissue and in the quality aspect of the connective tissue the collagen gets more cross linkage with more age and it becomes tough in the other side there is contractile machinery as we have discussed in the structure of muscle there is the 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 contractile machinery that is the contractile protein that is actin myosin the structure of colla sarcomia we have discussed so in this area we have an important aspect of the tenderness of meat with the uh, different degree of contraction of muscle and the integrity of the contractile machinery that also has an important role in the tenderness of meat as i have mentioned the muscle structure is important to understand the tenderness of meat or the effect of aging on tenderness so we had a details lecture on this in my initial videos about the structure of muscle so we know there is muscle bundle and then there is muscle fiber and inside the fiber there is myofilament and then there is the further structure of actin filament and myosin filament so in the muscle bundle there is the connective tissue called perimysium whereas outside there is epimysium and at the fiber level there is endomysium so these are the connective tissues at different level 
this we need to understand because the aging has an impact on these connective tissues at different level and then if we understand the myofibril that is within the muscle fiber there is myofibril and in the myofibril there is myofilament in the myofilament we have discussed about the thick filament and thin, fil thin filament at this stage we need to understand the structure of the sarcomere so there is z line or z disc which is holding the structure of all the proteins that is the thick filament and thin filament are hold at the z disc so when the meat becomes tough particularly after the rigor mortis there is a shrinkage of all this structure and leading to stiffening now at the latter stage after the rigor mortis there is natural effect of different enzymes naturally present and all these enzymes act at different level either on the myofibrils or at the z disc and they cause degradation of some gap filament proteins at the z line and then finally thus this stiffening is gone slowly and that is called resolution of rigor and side by side there are some more enzymes which act on the connective tissue and that helps in tenderness so which we are going to discuss in details in the in this lecture here in the left side diagram we can see the muscle fibers under light microscope and in the right side we can see the myofibrils followed by myofilaments the myofilaments at a very high electron microscopic magnification so here we want to show the muscle contraction has an impact on the tenderness so in this diagram first we can see the two sarcomere and their length so there is huge gap between the thick filament and thin filament or the a band and i band in the next line we can see the gap is reduced due to the contraction so this meat will be comparatively more tough and in the third line bottom we can see that there is complete contraction so there is no more gap almost no gap between the thick filament and thin filament so length of the sarcomere in the top line length of the two sarcomere we can see and in the middle it has reduced and in the bottom it has very significantly reduced so this is to show that contraction of muscle leads to toughness of meat here we will quickly review about the rigor mortis this we have discussed in full details in my initial lecture when we discussed about conversion of muscle to meat so after death there will be no supply of oxygen due to the failure of blood circulation but still muscle will try to maintain its structure so it will generate energy through anaerobic glycolysis so muscle continues to contract and relax after death and the oxygen supply is not there so there will be anaerobic glycolysis which causes accumulation of lactic acid and slowly there will be falling of ph and at one stage there will be no more glycogen or glucose available so no more energy will be produced and the ph will heavily go down which we call ultimate ph so at this stage since there is no energy available the muscle filaments will undergo permanently locking together that is by formation of actomyosin so actin and myosin in the filament thick filament and thin filament forms permanent actomyosin and when all the actin myosin forms it it becomes very stiff and that is the stage called rigor, rigor mortis so sometime if this filament lock in relaxed state that time meat will be tender so here once again we will understand what happens during post mortem changes so there is anaerobic glycolysis post mortem glycolysis causing muscle to shorten which results in stiffening this is known as rigor mortis and this cause muscle to become less tender at this stage of rigor mortis it is heavily stiffening and it is most tough meat and rigor is complete after about 24 hours in case of large animal 
in case of small animal it can be 12 to 16 hours so this time varies depending on many conditions and temperature therefore the muscle contractile unit called the sarcomere must be broken to improve the tenderness so the stiffening we saw we uh, get is due to the ectomyosin and the rigor mortis happens the sarcomere becomes shortening so now this has to be broken then only there will be improve in tenderness so that is what is the focus of discussion today in the aging process and more finally after all this when meat undergo cooking that further helps in the improving of tenderness as i have mentioned the rigor stage is worst for meat and it is most tough so it has to undergo resolution of rigor this also we have discussed in earlier lecture in conversion of muscle to meat so here there will be first denaturation of protein during the rigor mortis stage when meat is at a high temperature and due to falling of pH there will be some denaturation and that facilitates proteolysis at the latter stage so this is initiated by the releasing of calcium ion from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and there is a substance called calcium activated sarcoplasmic factor CASF they are the kind of enzymes which become active at pH 6 and plays important role and this CASF causes jetline disintegration by degrading desmin and connectin so in the muscle structure we have discussed there is a jetline protein which holds the uh, actin and myosin filament and in the jet line there are branch amino acids and that forms desmin and connectin they hold the cytoskeletal structure of the muscle proteins further there will be release of cathepsin different enzyme like BDL and they are active at pH 5 which causes degradation of actin and myosin that is the myofibular protein are broken by catheptic enzymes and gap filament proteins are broken by CASF and further the collagen present in connective tissue that undergoes swelling and some broke breakage happens in the cross links of the collagen so all these thing leads to loosening of the muscle which was stiffening during the rigor stage so this stage when the stiffening is gone by these three different activity at the jet line at the sarcomere and myofibular protein and by the breakage of collagen so there is a resolution and there is a breakage of structural integrity through enzymatic degradation so that is the resolution of rigor so we are going to discuss all these changes in details during the aging and conditioning so before we go to talk about conditioning or aging we can discuss briefly about cold shortening this is a abnormal condition due to wrong practice we always think that meat has to be chilled at the earliest to prevent the microbial effect or microbial spoilage so we always advise that the carcass should be chilled at the earliest possible but this carcass should not be chilled before the rigor mortis is over or more specifically the temperature should not go below 15 or 16 degrees celsius before the rigor mortis is over so this is a condition that is pre rigor chilling leading to shortening of the muscles and that meat will be very tough so this condition is called cold shortening shortening of the muscle due to early chilling below 15 to 16 degrees celsius so this causes a contraction and meat becomes tough so here the filaments lock together in a contracted state and this depends on the rate of chilling and rate of rigor mortis leading to cold shortening so we must see that the meat should not be below 15 16 degrees celsius before the rigor mortis is over or we have to chill early means we need to do a special practice nowadays that is by giving electrical stimulation so electrical stimulation can quickly overcome the rigor mortis and then we can go for early chilling that's a solution to avoid the cold shortening if we have to chill the meat at the earliest before we talk about aging or conditioning 
we need to discuss briefly about the different muscles and their tenderness so muscles at different location has a difference in their function and also have a difference in the tenderness so first of all the muscles of locomotion that is all the shoulder region and back region involved in locomotion or movement they are having high activity and because of that they will have more connective tissue accumulation and generally they will be less tender whereas there are other group of muscle which are called as muscles of attachment they will not have that much activity so less work so resulting they will have less connective tissue and those muscles will have more tender meat like loin area or rib area so these muscles which have less activity are called as middle meats and they are more tender so there is more demand for such meat and those meats sell quickly at a higher price here at the top we can see the muscles of attachment that is the muscles at the region like loin area they have less activity only they are middle and they are sometimes called middle meat and has a very high demand sold at a very high price whereas the muscles at the shoulder region along with leg and muscles at the thigh region has got huge activity for locomotion and they will be comparatively less tender now we will focus more on conditioning or aging so conditioning is a natural process of tenderization when meat is stored or aged after rigor mortis so this is a natural practice of holding the meat to make it better to improve the tenderness and also the flavor and juiciness so when meat is stored above freezing point at a temperature between 0 to 3 degree celsius all the changes that usually occur at higher temperature take place at a slow rate so if we hold the meat at high temperature these changes happens very fast but that may lead to sometimes spoilage so to avoid the spoilage it is hold at a lower temperature for a more time so that slowly all desirable changes takes place and meat becomes better in tenderness flavor and juiciness so changes in myofibrillar structure during conditioning there is some degradation in connective tissue structure also which further aids the meat to become tender so during this conditioning there will be changes in myofibrillar structures during this conditioning and also there will be changes or degradation in the connective tissue as i mentioned at the beginning and there is more tenderness flavor and juiciness so these are the advantage of conditioning that is holding the meat which is also called as aging so in continuation during conditioning there are proteolytic enzymes of muscle fibers which bring about desirable changes so those enzymes are either from the casf i mentioned or from the lysosome that is catheptic enzymes and this conditioning which is also called ripening or aging is manifested by marked increase in flavor juiciness and tenderness of meat the action of enzymes is almost completely inhibited when the meat is stored at temperature below freezing so it should not be kept below freezing in that case these desirable changes will not happen and bacterial action does not bring conditioning it is not by the bacterial enzymes that can cause changes during conditioning so during this post mortem aging calcium activated sarcoplasmic factors or casf which is also called as calpenes they break the filament structure that is the myofilament that is thick filament and thin filament so more specifically they break the contractile proteins that is the actin and myosin and increase the tenderness by decreasing the integrity of the muscle or by breakdown of the protein there is another protein which is called calpestatin which is a inhibitor of calpenes and that prevents the breakdown and decreases the tenderness so it all depends which one is more active if the calpen is more active the tenderness will be better but if the calpestatin is more active then that will prevent the breakdown and prevent the tenderness
there are other factors like nutrition management and genetics that can affect the level of calpens and calpestatin so the husbandry practices scientific production of animal that can change the effect of calpens or calpestatin and thereby it can affect the tenderness during this aging process so what are the proteolytic enzymes playing major role for bringing the desirable changes during aging one is the cathepsins from lysosome or they are called as cathepteic enzymes and there are different category like cathepteic b cathepteic d cathepteic l and they act on different site on the protein which i am going to discuss later then there are calpen as i told calcium activated sarcoplasmic factor it can be two variety one is micro calpen another is macro calpens then there is the calcium ion factor that is macro calcium and micro calcium factors and there is calpestatin that is which acts against the calpen action so that depresses the calpen action that is also an important factor so these are the important proteolytic enzymes which plays very important role for changing the structure and bring desirable changes during aging so here once again we will see the effect of aging on the protein and how the desirable changes is happening so during this conditioning improvement in tenderness is due to changes in myofibrils or myofibrillar proteins especially on the actin and myosin and there is also action at the z-line proteins or gap filament and there is a change in the connective tissue that is from the collagen and made up of collagen fiber and the ground substance like proteoglycan these changes are brought about by several kind of enzymes as i mentioned that is the multi catalytic proteinase complex calcium activated proteases calpens and lysosomal proteases and cathepteic enzymes so this is the summary for affecting the change during aging the enzymes involved and where it is acting now we will discuss more details about the calpens which plays a major role in tenderization during aging so these calpens and multi catalytic proteinase complex both are present in sarcoplasm they are also called as calcium activated sarcoplasmic factor calpens are calcium dependent enzymes and they have a specific inhibitor called calpestatin which is also present in the sarcoplasm of muscle fiber so the calpen act by the activation from calcium but side by side there is a negative activation by the calpestatin the calpens differ in their calcium requirement for activation so there are different kind of calpens and their activity depends on the level of calcium or concentration of calcium ions here we can see calpens of two category one is m calpen that is the macro calpen which are activated by high concentration of calcium ion and there is another micro calpen which is activated by low concentration of calcium ion so calpens are at two category so here we will see the site of action of these enzymes as i as we all know sarcomer lies between two z lines in the myofibrillar structure or myofilament we have seen the two z lines in between two z line is the sarcomer and sarcomer is the functional unit in the myofibrils these enzymes calpen and cathepsins cause degradation of z disc and also the breakdown of some uh, actin and myosin protein and thereby it causes disconnection from the sarcomer between two z lines and due to this degradation of z disc and separation of sarcomeres and breakdown of myofibrillar proteins there is a loosening of myofibrillar structure so this leads to reduction of stiffness or toughness and cause tenderness but the formation of actomyosin that is the actomyosin bridge between actin and myosin still remain intact here we will see the specific site of action of different enzymes or protease 
So first is the sarcoplasmic origin that is CASF I mentioned. There are two categories, calpin 1 and calpin 2. Calpin 1 is active and releasing the actinin and zednin. These are the protein present in the Z line and plays important role as cytoskeletal protein for holding the structure. And second category is calpin 2 which degrades desmin, connectin and nebulin. So desmin is present in the Z line whereas connectin and nebulin connected to Z line and holding the thick filament and thin filament. They also, this calpin 2 also degrades troponin and tropomyosin. These are the part of thin filament together with uh, the actin protein and forms the thin filament. And they also degrade the C and M protein. C protein is holding the myosin molecules together to form the thick filament. And M proteins are present at the middle of the sarcomere as the midline. So these proteins are broken or released by the calpin 2. Then the lysosomal origin which are called catheptic enzymes are in three categories. The cathepsin B which degrades myosin, actin, troponin and also degrades collagen that is the connective tissue protein. Then cathepsin D degrades again myosin actin in addition alpha actinin which is connected to Z line and helps in polymerization of actin. It also degrades troponin and tropomyosin present in the thin filament and also degrades collagen in the connective tissue. Cathepsin L degrades actin myosin and alpha actinin, degrades troponin tropomyosin and also degrades collagen. So this is a more details about specific activity of the enzymes. Here we will see the summary of effect of conditioning, the key changes during conditioning around 2 to 4 degrees Celsius, weakening of or degradation of jet disc, disappearance of troponin T that is in the thin filament, degradation of desmin present in the thick uh, in the jet line, degradation of titin connecting with the jet filament and with the thin filament and jet line and degradation of nebulin again connected with the Z line and appearance of 95,000 kilo Dalton a big polypeptide which is coming after proteolysis of the myofibrillar protein maybe from the myosin. The conditioning times for 80% tenderness at 1 degree Celsius. Here is an example if we fix the temperature then how much time will take. But if we increase the temperature, the time required is less for tenderization or optimum conditioning. So in case of pork, 5 to 10 days at 1 degree Celsius, lamb 7 to 14 days and beef 10 to 20 days. In the right side diagram, we can see a brief summary how the, after the slaughter, there is the rigor mortis followed by release of these kind of enzymes of calpins and cathepsins and that cause disruption of myofibril and Z line structure and causing the large amount of peptides and improving the tenderness and flavor during the process of aging. Here we will see briefly the other chemical changes. So, so far I was focusing more on tenderness but there are other changes happening particularly the other chemical changes. So, the Formation of ATP is no more there, so it changes to ADP and then to IMP, inosine monophosphate and finally forming inosinic acid and that gives to hyposanthine. This hyposanthine is a very good flavoring component. So production of hyposanthine happens during the process of aging. So controlling conditioning leads to a optimum situation when the hyposanthine level reaches 1.5 to 2 micromole per gram of meat. So it, this timing depends on the temperature and pH. The, if the temperature is high, if the pH is high, all the process of activity of these enzymes will be faster. So time taken to reach the optimum aging for flavor or tenderness will be less. So higher the temperature and pH, less is the time required. So for example, if we keep the meat at 0 degree, it may take 10 to 13 day for optimum aging. Whereas if the temperature is 30 degree, it may take only 10 to 13 hours for the same desirable changes. 
here is an example of inosinic acid in alkanein and glucose candy glucose it can produce basic meat flavor and breakdown of protein and fat during this process contributes to so many other flavorful components from the fat also and that's how the flavor is improved during aging here is a recommended procedure for commercial conditioning of beef firstly the dressed carcass should be chilled at minus 0.5 degree to 3 degree celsius for one to two days and made into quarters second the sides or quarters should be held at 2 to 3 degree celsius for 10 to 12 days third step before retail sale the quarters should be held at ordinary room temperature and if the room temperature is too high they should be held at below 4 degree 4 to 7 degree celsius for 24 hours and commercially conditioning of meat is limited to 2 to 6 weeks and when beef is cut into small joints the greatest increase in palatability is ensured by a storage period of 9 days so this is the recommended procedure for conditioning to practice for beef now we have thoroughly discussed about the aging and conditioning and its effect now one of the major focus in this lecture is about the tenderness how aging improves the tenderness so there is a need to measure the tenderness so how the tenderness of meat is measured it is by two a one is by subjective another is by objective in the subjective measurement it is determined by how easily the teeth sink into the piece of meat upon first bite so subjective means how we feel it while eating whether it is tender or not so first thing to see is how easily teeth sink into the piece of meat then second is how easily the meat piece get fragmented broken into pieces further smaller pieces and thirdly the number of chews before the piece is swallowed so if the meat is soft and tender we can easily swallow it with a few number of chewing but if the meat is tough we need to chew more and more number before we could swallow it this is about the subjective measurement whereas there is objective measurement which is done with instruments and different kind of uh, machinery is available so here the by measuring the force of searing or cutting through the piece so a specific size of piece is taken and it is seared or cut through machinery device and we measure the how much force is required if the force required more that means it is tough if the force required less then it is tender so this is how the measurement of tenderness of meat is done so we can measure the shear force through the machines and, and then we can measure the tenderness or toughness of meat. A number of procedures are available to measure tenderness by searing. One of the best procedure is determining the pounds of force required to sear a half inch core sample of meat or products. So a core of sample is taken like a finger and then it is kept in the machine for searing and the force required is measured the meat is first cooked to at a 160 degree Fahrenheit and at least eight cores are removed as sample and the common machine which is used is called Werner Bresler sear force machine is most common there are some more machines so this machine is used to measure the pounds of force required to sear the core and this force is measured from the scale in the machine which I am going to show later. Here we can see the different cut portion of meat which has to be measured for shear force. The sample meat is taken and in the next step we have to cook it. Here we can see that meat which has to be measured for shear force is cooked through grilling, automatic grilling pan. So it should be cooking around 70 degrees Celsius. After that the core of sample will be taken. This is in case of fresh meat. 
the product in that case the product itself we can take for CRE or we can take a core sample from the bigger product here we can see that cooked meat from which the core is taken so there is a bore, boring uh, machine small boring machine which cut a particular piece of meat about a one centimeter cube and those samples are used for searing in the Warner Brazler Sear Force machine. So here we can see the machine, Warner Brazler Sear Force machine, in which there is a place where a bore of or core of sample is kept and there is a cutting device. We can see in that place that it will cut through it and while cutting or searing, how much force is required, it will be shown in the scale at the round round scale in which we can measure the amount of force required and record it. Here we can see the Werner Brazler shear force values and the relation with the tenderness. So if the force is more that means meat is more tough. If the force required is less the meat is soft. So in case of normal meat if the shear force value is less than 7 generally it is expressed in kg. So then it is very tender when it is 7 to 10 it is the tenderness is reduced and the shear phrase shear value has increased and when it is above 10 it is considered as the tough meat. Now we are at the end of today's lecture as uh, I mentioned today's topic is mainly on aging and how it is affecting or improving the tenderness. So basically we have discussed at the beginning what are the palatability factors of which tenderness is very important. So improving tenderness is a major focus. So how the natural practice of holding meat that is conditioning or aging improves the tenderness we know that's a common practice. So we have discussed in details what about the structure of muscle briefly and where the toughness happens during the stiffening or rigor mortis and how the changes happens after the rigor mortis and resolution of rigor. We have discussed in details about the conditioning and aging and what kind of changes happens, what are the different kind of enzymes involved, what are the important enzymes, where they act exactly. And then we have discussed the salient changes and summary. Uh, about the changes happening during conditioning or aging and that leads to improvement in tenderness and also it changes chemically and improves the flavor and we have recommend uh, we have learned about the commercial practice for conditioning to be followed in case of beef and briefly we have discussed about measurement of tenderness by subjective and objective methods and subsequently we will discuss in details about the other methods of tenderization or artificial methods of tenderization in two separate lectures. Thank you. Thanks for listening.